Sit. Let's there she call is. To order. Oh, everyone's Hi. here. All right, let's call to order the virtual meeting for the library commission. Um, if we could do a roll call, please. Okay, Commissioner Hannon. Here. Commissioner Koopman. Here. Commissioner Worsing. Here. Commissioner Hall. Here. Commissioner Walls. Here. Commissioner Nafisi. Here. And Chairperson Beauchamp. Here. Um, uh, Commissioner Worsing, would you would you uh, lead us in the salute to the flag if we could stand and if you could just lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? This isn't long enough. I need to fix <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, of, United States America. of America and to and the to Republic, Republic, to the Republic which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under, God, under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you, Commissioner Wersing. I know it's a little awkward with the video conference, yeah. but thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, I think you all have seen the, the packet. Uh, do we have a motion and a second to approve the order of agenda? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, so um, I, I heard Commissioner Koopman. Who was the second? Commissioner Walls. Commissioner Walls, thank you. Um, any objections? Discussion? Um, uh, do I have to take a roll call vote, uh, Director Anderson, for that? I'll just do it. Um, in favor, say aye, Commissioner Koopman. Aye. Uh, you already made the moat. Yep, Commissioner Nafisi. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Hannon. Aye. Commissioner Walls. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Hall. Aye. And Commissioner Worsing. Aye. Okay. Um, I don't. Are there any blue folder items, Director Anderson, for us to review? No. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the consent calendar, which includes the um, approval for affidavit of posting from the and uh, approval of the following minutes. Um, is there any discussion on the consent calendar? Okay, um, could I get a motion and a second to approve and file the consent calendar? I'll make a motion to approve and file this thank, consent thank calendar. You. Thank you, Commissioner Hannon. I'll second. I can. And I'm sorry, the second was Commissioner Hall? It was well, Koopman. Koopman. Oh, Koopman. Okay. All right. Motion a second. Um, I'll just uh, do a roll call vote again. Um, approve, say aye. Commissioner Koopman? Aye. Commissioner Nafisi? Aye. Commissioner Hannon? Aye. Commissioner Walls? Aye. Commissioner Hall? Aye. And Commissioner Worsing? Aye. Okay, thank you. So we're receiving and filing the consent calendar. Next item is public participation on non-agenda items. I don't see any members of the public. Um, so next item is I-1, which is items continued from the previous agenda, which is discussion of strategic planning. Director Anderson, we saw okay. your, you want to elaborate on that? So um, a new strategic planning date has not been set. I think they're going to, because there's a new uh, city council person, they're just kind of going to start over uh, with like an all day strategic planning, although that date has not been set. I'm sure they'll probably carry over some of the suggestions from the last session. Um, so I don't have any news um, there, and I will definitely let you all know once that date is set. Um, related to this item, I will say I was on a um, California Public Library Director's um, networking Zoom call, and we were put into breakout groups, and one of the discussion topics was, you know, what, what we could see changing in the library world post-pandemic, and one of the things I brought up was um, the possibility of those uh, book dispensing machines or those material dispensing machines. And I hate to say it, but I, I got a lot of negative feedback from my group that they had tried them and they just break down a lot. So it doesn't seem like there's a good product out there. 
I will say uh, another possibility, it's a, it's a little more complicated, is um, there's something called Open Plus, which allows patrons to enter the library when there's no staff there, when the library is essentially closed to the public, but, but patrons can enter with you know, a library card, like swiping a library card. And then I think there's video cameras and such. Um, obviously a more complicated proposition, but um, they are going to set up one of the Torrance branches with Open Plus. She got a grant to do that. So that is definitely something we could keep an eye on, see how it works in Torrance, suggest that up at a potential strategic planning if it seems to be going well there. Um, I'm thinking especially if our modified hours, you know, last for more a couple of years into the future, but even with our old um, hours, you know, like North Branch was closed on Fridays. So anyway, something to keep an eye on, or maybe we'll get some better products with the vending machines. But I think the first thing we need to see is if the item for, um, you know, looking at county service or looking at privatization, you know, goes forth with the next plan. So still in a bit of a holding pattern with that one. Um, let's see, it, are, uh, do we, I think last time we used to be able to raise our hands so I could see if you guys were, had any okay. commentary, but I don't see that now. Did I do something wrong? Oh, uh, looks like Commissioner Worsing got her hand raised. Uh, all right. Oh, yep. Commissioner Worsing, thank you. Yeah, it's it's at the bottom. Yeah, um, I see it now. Do you know how soon Torrance is going to try that? I, I, that just sounds really rife for problems. <laughs> yes. I mean, I admit that whether, you know, the city would be interested in pursuing that path is a big question. They do have it in Ventura County. That's the only library I know, system I know that's in this region that has tried it. Um, and I'm not sure, I mean, she does have the grant for it. So I assume that it has to happen, you know, with some time probably within the next year, I, I can check back with her on that, but, but it will be a nice test case for us to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting concept. You know, they can use the computers. They can, even you know, it's just like totally self-serve. And access, access to the entire library with no one there. Correct. Am I the only one that thinks that that's a bad idea? <laughs> well, I do have questions as well, you yeah. know, but. Yeah, lots of concerns. <laughs> I mean, maybe they just they have, feel like, go ahead. Yeah, Commissioner Cooper. I was going to ask, is, is there, um, oh, what, it was Ventura that said that had participated in the plan? Or had Ventura done? County has it installed in one of their branches, yes. And is there a report on how it was successful or not successful? Not that I know of, but I mean, <laughs> that director is part of Southern California Library Cooperative. So, you know, I could definitely check back with her now that they've probably had it for about a year now, I would say. But I think there's like a limited number of people who are allowed in at any one time. And, um, you know, they do have your information because you're swiping a card to get in. But, it, you know, it still, you know, raises some questions, I would say. But it definitely is a way to extend service and access to the buildings. Um, Commissioner Hall and Commissioner Nafisi. I was just wondering if they have a security person who's there and it's just that there's no librarians or other staff or there's literally no staff. <laughs> there's no staff. Nobody. Okay. But anyway, it's something, you know, like I said, we not nothing we have to decide now, but just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Commissioner Nafisi. Um, oh, I'm on mute. Okay. Um, I bet there's just like no urge to like steal books these days because everything's like digital. I'm just totally putting it out there. And it, I also am curious like what it looks like in the sense of, I mean, maybe they haven't recorded success because they just don't know what success looks like because it's like a new program. But if it's happening, 
maybe they feel like the loss of books, it could be one of two things. It's so minimal that they can totally recoup for, from it. Or two, they feel like the loss of books is actually a gain because it's going into people's hands who need the books. I don't know. But I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I would think there would be some potential other considerations in terms of potential damage to equipment or yeah. potential um, interactions between patrons, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, even the transient population, they're like dying to find a place to just be, you know? And facilities and potential of sleeping under tables or you know like there's a lot of i don't want to completely discount it just based on that or just based on the potential downsides it just seems like there are significant Risk. potential downsides mm -hmm. well you know if we if we get to a point where we want to consider this as a suggestion for a strategic plan by then um maybe Torrance will have this up and running and I could have her come through the, the director of Torrance, I'm sure would be willing to come, you know, to one of our meetings maybe and discuss how it's going. Be yeah, awesome. Um, Commissioner Koopman. Oh. Two questions. Um, when would Torrance start this program? Um, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing within the next year, within this year. Is it possible to ask you to speak with Ventura? Just a nothing, no extravagant report, just a conversation and just get back to us? Because I am curious. I mean, um, I'm thinking, I mean, of course, my mind went to everything, vandalism, um, you know, destruction of, I mean, well, it's the same thing, destruction of property, same thing. Um, just, just someone pulling the fire alarm. I mean, I'm just thinking anything like that. So I'm just curious as to, I mean, I want to see how well it was done and how, I mean, I think Candace is right. There is probably, what's the definition of success, right? What, what have they perceived that? So I am curious if you can do that. I mean, I don't, I can make a motion about that. Um, Nothing like I said, not, no major report, just something to maybe just a conversation. Yeah, no, I, I think that would be smart just to give us ample time to kind of discuss this in advance of suggesting it as a strategic planning item. So, I mean, technically, this is a referral to staff. I don't know if we want to bring it up again in referrals to staff, but I, you know, I certainly don't see a problem with that. You know, I think that's smart, and I'm sure I could get some information from them as well as, like I said, we could um, maybe ask Torrance to, to come speak to one of our meetings in the future as well. I'd be happy to just bring it back up at the end of the meeting. Okay. Commissioner Nafisi. I just have a question, maybe you don't know the answer to this, but why do they need grant money if there's no staff there <laughs> to do the well, program? They, they like, Ventura so. did not have grant money to do it, but the state library um, offered grants for this, this past year, I would say. And um, the grant money is for the equipment to set it up. And there may be an ongoing annual cost as well. Okay. Okay. Yes, it probably is. Okay. Then Commissioner Koopman, did, did you have another question or another point to make? Oh, I had my two points. One was the how when would Torrance do it? And the second was will we uh, ask later and referral the staff? Sounds good. Any more discussion on this topic? It's really interesting. I guess I'll just say, I don't know if you guys have been in an Amazon Go store, um, but you you load the 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 Amazon app on your phone, you walk in the store, you pick up the items, you walk out of the store and you get an email and a receipt for what you purchased. Um, it's kind of a freaky experience, but you do kind of feel like you're in the future. Um, and I, I think it's cool that this whatever open plus, um, I think it's a really interesting concept and maybe one of the ways you could protect the library is you know tag a credit card to everybody who wants to do this so you know, they can be liable for any damage that occurs you know there's some limitation i suppose to you know you know the mission of the library is open access but i i think it's a really interesting concept anyway could we um, uh, oh sorry yeah, go ahead. i can't figure out how to raise my hand on the thing for some reason go, um, go so ahead here. um sorry we we're just talking about the kind of the you know open plus 
and completely opening up the library, of course, does introduce significant risks. And so we need to weigh that. But what about the potential of having that service just for people that have put books on hold? And those could be in a certain area and you kind of know what they're coming in for. It might be something yeah, like the there. lobby or something like they can only access the lobby or something. I mean, that's yeah. an interesting idea. That and it gets an closer area. to your vending machine. Concept, yeah, right? closer to the right. Yeah, but I, I think they're both really interesting ideas. It'd be kind of fun to explore. Any more discussion on item, um, I guess it's I-1, strategic planning? Um, all right, so I-2 is discussion of library reopening plans. Anderson. Okay, so since we last met, the library, re, the both buildings reopened for browsing on April 19th, and we opened to the our full hours, but our full hours as, you know, we were, that were approved in the last budget, so they, they have been reduced, but they are our new full hours. Um, we have not had chairs out. The computers have been limited to half an hour. We haven't had programs. We haven't had, um, we haven't been booking the meeting rooms. Um, however, from the last information I received from the county health department, the way I've read all the documents is that as of June 15th, we will not have the, we will no longer have the 75% capacity restrictions. So our plan is to put all the chairs back out, um, to up the computers to two hours again, although I think we're, we're going to keep those spaced apart and maybe not have them all available. We think we'll be able to accommodate demand with the ones that we have um, available. Um, we, uh, I can't remember, let me see here, what else we're changing. can't remember at this moment if anything else is going to change. Uh, masks are still required, I believe, waiting for some final, uh, you know, guidance on this, but I believe masks are still required of patrons. Once we get the chairs put out again on June 15th, um, Donia Sickler, our youth services librarian, who's here tonight to talk to you about the summer reading program, and I are going to look at doing some outdoor programs for kids in July or August. We're hoping we're gonna have a little more guidance on that too. So we'll know how to advertise them correctly, you know, whether masks will be required outside, et cetera. Still seems a little unclear right now. Um, then we will also start looking at booking the meeting rooms again at some point. Right now, the way the guidelines read any entity that books the meeting room has to have proof of vaccination from anyone in attending a meeting, which seems a hmm. little complicated. <laughs> um, so I, I'm kind of waiting to see if that's going to get modified. Um, and then we'll look at also bringing back in-person programs inside too, as soon as that becomes feasible to do so. So that's kind of the steps that we're looking at. We have slowly gotten busier, but um, we definitely have, you know, are not nearly as busy as we normally would be. This is it's kind of a good time to put all the chairs back out because um, we're not going to have the after school crowds. So we want, we aren't going to be typically as crowded as we normally would be. There should be plenty of room for people to spread out if they're not comfortable sitting by each other. We, we anticipate there will be plenty of room for that. Um, and people are still only slowly getting confident enough to come back and to hang out in the building. So that is going to take a little while, I think. Newspapers will also start back up on uh, July 1st. Any any discussion on reopening plans? Well, all I can say, uh, Director Anderson, is the Roaring Twenties happened after the Spanish flu, so I'm I'm expecting the floodgates to open and it's going to go crazy. That's my prediction. 
I hope so. We're kind of, I mean, it, it was nice the first week that it was slow while staff kind of got more confident with being open. But I think some of us now are wanting, you know, wanting more people to come back, you know. And it, and like I said, it has slowly gotten busier. Yeah, I saw the gate count was about a quarter of what it normally is. Mm -hmm. it's, that's, I, it's lower than I would have guessed. Okay, yeah, and it's not as busy as we usually would be. Um, any any discussion on uh, library reopening? Okay, I guess we'll move to items for discussion prior to action. Item J1 is discussion of the 2021 summer reading program, I guess. Uh, Okay, so we have Donia Sickler here to discuss our SRP, and I, she's going to try to share her screen. Yes. Thank you very much for inviting me again to come and explain our summer reading program. I really appreciate it, and welcome to our three new commissioners. So it's nice to meet you. It's really good to see some familiar faces, though I wish we were back in that building over there. It's much more exciting. This is not <laughs> anymore, but you know. <laughs> So I will see if I can share my screen. And let's put this. Do you guys see our summer reading? Yes. Where's your world? Okay. So this year our theme is reading colors your world. It's very appropriate, very apt. We're very excited about it. We are having another 10-week program. It's running from June 5th to August 14th. So I am, our, my team and my department is doing our best to get those gate numbers up. <laughs> I'm hoping that with the kickoff on Saturday, we've had uh, quite a bit of uh, hullabaloo around here. It's been quite nice to have patrons coming in, kids getting excited about coming into the library again. I think it's helped introduce the concept that the library is open once again for them. Um, with the with that being said, because COVID is still on our minds, we went ahead and we are doing a virtual online summer reading program again. They will sign up and log their activities on our Beanstack website. It's redondo.beanstack.org. We have an app for it and everything. So we also have some little sheets for to pass out, let the parents take home. Once they do get signed up, they will start receiving badges. So they're going to come in. We thought it would be fun to let the kids like flash their badge to us, either a digital print, a digital badge, or they can print it out. And that's where they can pick up their prizes. So they've been coming in, picking up their their backpacks. You know, their backpacks. They they get to decorate them. There's pencils in there. There's also a calendar for the parents to take a look at. We oh, I forgot. I was supposed to introduce the adult summer reading program. I forgot about that. We have our three summer reading programs again. We have one for the adults. The adults will be signing, uh, logging, signing up and logging their, their book reviews and their, the books that they've read online. And once again, every week we'll be uh, pulling, drawing a name from an opportunity drawing from the uh, people who submitted book reviews for some gift cards, for a gift card. So each week the adults have a chance to, to earn their gift cards again for book reviews. We're going to have to see if we can't uh, do some backpacks or maybe family packs for the adults. <laughs> <laughs> but for our summer reading kit for the kids, this is our children's program. You can see we've got all kinds of stuff going on it, going on with it. So we have our children's program and that runs again for our zero to fifth graders or sometimes our sixth graders. It depends. You know, we, we let the parents judge what uh, level they want to read. So for every five hours in the children's program, they get to earn a badge, come in, flash it, pick up their prizes. Then they um, get to, once they finish, we also have our opportunity drawing at the end of the summer reading. So to earn an opportunity drawing ticket, the children have to finish their summer reading. So they end up reading um, 25, 
25 hours. Wait, 5, 10, 15, 20. 50 hours, sorry. <laughs> and then the, um, so it's every five hours. No, it is 25 hours. It says right there. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting nervous for some reason. I apologize. You're doing um, great. <laughs> so they, after 25 hours, they finished and they'll be able to get an opportunity drawing ticket for that. But they also have some other ways of earning opportunity drawing tickets. If you can, you can see some of our prizes, some of our sponsors this year, Again, we have Dodgers, Brock and Brews, McDonald's, Benny Hanna's. They've all been so good to us. And now with Raising Canes coming into the community, they're there too. They they were they were very nice and sent us some uh, meals for the kids. For our program this year, like I said, we're, we are still going to be doing all virtual programming. We've got our regular finger plays, story times, and uh, Lego Club and Craft. That's every Monday we release a new program for the, for the kids. But we've added some, uh, some new things. This year for summer, we've got a science at the library experiment. And those are a lot of fun. The, my team is is so excited they just showed me their geodes on june 10th we're going to be presenting how to make geodes at home with things that you have at home then on july 8th they're going to be making sensory bottles and we're going to try to we're, what we'll be doing is oil and water of course they don't mix but also if you do uh oil and um oil and alcohol rubbing alcohol it actually flips so usually oil and water, water's on the top, but because of the density of the alcohol, it's actually lighter than uh, the oil. The alcohol will flip and have the, the oil on the bottom. So it's, it's kind of a fun concept we're going to be expanding on for the kids and the teens, actually. The teens are invited to the Science of the Library web uh, programs. And then on August 12th, we're going to be making something even more fun. It's rock candy. That way they get to consume it too. And most of us have sugar in the house. Uh, what we've done though this year is we've added also some uh, virtual programming. And I wanted to do something different this year. We, in the state of California, we do the iRead program. We do that well along with the state of Illinois. But the majority of the rest of the United States libraries, they do something uh, from the CSLP. And this year, that, that theme is Tales and Tales, so T-A-L-E-S, T-A-I-L-S. So I took, I uh, contacted some programmers, Checkers Libra Library TV, from the East Coast, because I wanted something different that LAPL didn't have, LA County doesn't have, Torrance wouldn't have. I wanted our community to have something different, because we, we all know, they all, we all share the libraries, even librarians share the, all the other libraries. So I went ahead and I chose Checkers Library TV. They're going through biomes and animals and just some really fun things. And I think that the community is going to really enjoy that this year. We're also continuing our take and make bag crafts. So each month we'll be having a different uh, craft for them to pick up and take in and Play it, do it at home. Uh, Commissioner Koopman, you've had a, a question, I think, for a while. I was just curious as to what the prize was from the Dodgers. Oh, it's because she helps us. <laughs> Commissioner Koopman's always, always active. Kids are active, and she's active in this program, I know. Yes, yeah, she is. It's, it's, uh, she actually helped us. She gave us the contact for this. So, oh, that's awesome. I, I forgot to, I'm sorry, Grace, I forgot to tell you. We actually got a couple of autographed pictures this year. Oh, cool. Ooh. Yeah, we thought that was pretty cool. We were, who, are they, who are they of? I don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I'm lucky I just remember what we've got. <laughs> You know me. <laughs> Sorry. I can tell you that later. <laughs> um, so this is our teen summer reading. And it's it's similar to the children's, but this time they they get they have to read every 10 hours. That's when they, they will read and they get their prizes. So they'll read for a total of 50 hours. Two weeks is what we what we get it. It's 10 hours every two weeks, and they can earn a badge. Some of our teens 
through it through that for in that first week and they've got all their prizes they're done but there are others we have some levels um from our from the um i'm sorry the special needs our special needs edition of the school you know and we wanted to make sure that they had prizes that were age appropriate for them but that they could also attain so we just kept it at 10 hours and we've invited them to attend the science in the library we did introduce a brand new program we're, we're trying something new this year it's our programs on the go and what that is is it's essentially it's a take and make craft kit but that's something totally different they get to take it and make it and do something at home all by themselves but this program's on the go we have coordinated it so that they check out a book that's related to the kit. So our first uh, kit that we're going to be passing out starting on June 15th, and it is available only while supplies last, so it's first come, first serve, they're going to be making candy sushi. So the books that they could check out on this one would be cookbooks or nutrition books. We've had a dorm cooking program, you know, for the teens. So there are certain, there's all kinds of books that will accept. It's, it, it's okay. Even because sushi is Japanese, they could, I'm all for letting them check out a manga book. Uh, I just want them to check out a book and read and enjoy it. Find something that they can associate with the book and, and enjoy it. So that's our, our new thing that we're trying this year. I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm hoping it goes better <laughs> than we thought it would. But sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I forgot to tell you all the ways that the kids and the teens can earn extra opportunity drawing tickets. Of course, like I said, they have to, they have to complete the program. So read their 10 hours, or, or I'm sorry, 25 hours or 50 hours. And, or they will get secret codes for all of our programming, all of our virtual programming. So for our regular story times, for the Checkers, libra uh, the Checkers Library, we don't have a secret code. But for any of the programming that we're providing, our science at the library, that type of thing, the children will be able to get us enter a secret code, to get a badge, and earn an extra opportunity drawing. Now, for the teens, they've got a couple of other ways to do it. They get to, they can decorate their backpacks because they are the regular canvas backpacks, so they can decorate them, take a picture of it, and submit it as a picture book review. So they will be able to present it. We do have to review everything. I want to assure you of that. All book reviews, all picture book reviews, anything that's submitted, we have to review as a staff first, and then we allow it to go on open for the for the rest of the public to see the other way that these teens can earn an opportunity drawing ticket is to do their programs on the go show their showcase their their finished product along with a picture of, of the book that they've they checked out with it and that will also earn them an opportunity drawing ticket we've got a couple of other um, sponsors that really help out with the teens in and out and Little Caesars have provided us with some, some more uh, coupons for their goods that the teens, that we, we save specially for the teens because sometimes it's hard to get the uh, places to include them. So I, I really push to get them in. And that is it. It's a 10 week program. Sign up, have your kids sign up. You guys sign up. We've got an adult program. You guys know how to read, I know it. <laughs> do sign up and we really do uh we appreciate everything that you guys do for us and we want to let you know that we are here for you and for the community if you have any questions just let me know love your passion for the program um it's awesome the, you know i couldn't sell water to a, a, a dehydrated person but man i can sell a library program it is best and easiest thing that is the one thing where i will tell you i'm, I'm going to continue this one i cannot wait till we open the doors mm -hmm. I, it's my only regret is that it is not when we can have the students coming in because i really truly feel that um the best thing that we can offer a student some days is just a smile my team knows this, so they got me, <laughs> got me a special mask <laughs> so that when my when the kids come in, they can see my mouth and I 
tell you, I've worn it with a couple of babies who were born, you know, within a COVID epidemic, and now they're a little bit older. And the parents brought them in. They were so happy. And I was wearing this mask, and they were, like, looking at me like, oh, my God, somebody else has a mouth under there? It's not just a mask? So I am, I'm, I'm very excited to get people back into our library and, and using it the way it should be used. Commissioner Koopman. Um, Donya, this is the first year you're, use, you're using Beanstack, right? Yes. It's because it was a different platform last year. It was. We had book points last year, and uh, the friends of the library purchased that and paid for it for us. But this year, uh, California State Library uh, of, made, it, made Beanstack available to everyone. They actually did it last year, but we had already purchased book points. They did it way too late in the year. Um, I'm married to a planner. <laughs> so <laughs> we try to get everything done in, in time. There's always little things that you got to fix anyway. So yes, we are using a different platform than we did last year. And when you say that the they made it available for us, did that mean that we had no cost involved? Correct. Oh, nice. It was like a grant, yes. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions or comments on the summer reading program? I think Nona. Nona has um, a Oh, Commissioner yeah. Wallace, go ahead. And yeah, I, I, usually I'm really good with this, but I cannot find the raising hand. It, it, so Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Wallace, it's just at the bottom of the Zoom thing is a raise hand button. Do you it's see it right below your my, picture? The oh. funny thing is, it's not on mine today. I use right. Zoom all day long. And it, anyway, it doesn't so matter. Thank you for calling me. Um, first of all, thank you for putting these programs together and coming to uh, explain them because it does, it helps quite a bit knowing that we do have the different targeted programs for the different groups and helps us, you know, get out and encourage people to um, join these programs and participate. One of the things I was thinking about is with all these great programs, what ways or how could we potentially get the word out a little bit better? Are there ways that we could maybe expand you know, increase exposure or increase interest. And I was thinking with potentially with the local restaurants, at least those that have donated, would we have any opportunity maybe to talk to the management of the local re restaurants and ask if they would put little, you know, cards or flyers or even a sign when people check in to we just say, hey, read a lot, you can win free dinner here. You know, or yeah. obviously something much more eloquent. <laughs> but yeah, we could do some quarter sheets. And if they would be actually willing to put those out, I do. I do want to let you know that we, under regular circumstances, my team and I go out to. We hit at least seven of the eight elementary schools, and we talk to them in the morning during their morning meetings. We send things out to our middle schools. Most of the time, they don't have the time to let us in the middle schools and the high schools. But the teachers are very. The principal and the teachers are very uh, good at helping us get the word out. They know that we help that we help to support them through the summer. We try not to, you know, we try to help them keep the kids from going through that summer slide of forgetting how to read and or or just comprehension. So we do have that. This year, what we did is we actually made some short videos. They're actually on our Facebook page. So if you look and you can find, uh, scroll down in the Facebook page, you'll find we did do a teen video, you'll, it, which introduces our new teen services librarian. And then uh, one of my other team members, Lisa, went ahead and did our uh, presentation for the children's. So we, we put those on Facebook. We also sent them out to RBUSD for, uh, to send out, but we have our contacts with our, uh, with the principals that we work with every year and that the staff at each of the schools. So we sent it all out to them too. And I, I will tell you, I got the weirdest calls that first day. I didn't realize my team members had done it. And the next day I'm like, why am I getting all these weird calls and questions, specific questions about the program? How did they find this out? And then it was like, oh, duh. They had already gotten it from their schools. So the schools, the schools know, especially the elementary schools, we're very, uh, very, Every year we go for our summer reading program. And then the last few years, we've been very good about getting out to the back to school nights and the um, open houses. We do everything we can, even for the, the upper grades too. 
So we, we, but I like that idea of maybe getting the people who gave us some coupons to help us sponsor the, the program too. I like that. Advertise it. That's it. Any more questions or comments on uh, the summer reading program? Doesn't look like we have any comments for the from the public either, Andrew. I think we've oh, yeah, I should have been asking about that. the comments. Yeah, but usually it would kind of they flow across my screen, so that should remind me. But no, we don't have any. Okay, thank you, thank you. Youth Services Librarian Donya Sickler. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is J two discussion of the Kluge Center, Center report on disinformation. Okay, so it's actually pronounced Kluge. Which Kluge? Kluge. <laughs> Sorry, thank you for the correction. So back in February, um, the American Library Association uh, sent out an email um, asking people to participate in what's called a Wiki Wisdom Forum if, uh, they, about the topic of misinformation or disinformation and how people could envision sort of bringing a community together through shared facts or shared um, knowledge. And um, I, did I did participate and I contributed some ideas and then was chosen to be one of 15 librarians to put together this report, which um, for the Kluge Center, Library of, Con Library of Congress Kluge Center, um, and we had about two weeks to put it together. There were 15 of us from across the country working at all different types of libraries, working in different types of communities um, with you know, some different ideas of how to approach this topic, working on a Google Doc. I mean, if you can kind of imagine, this was really a, a, a challenging project done in sort of our spare time over two weeks and then we produced this document that we presented um, online to the Kluge Center and like the president of ALA was uh, one of the attendees that we were presenting to. Um, you know it is a difficult topic and a very um, large topic but I think all things considered it's a pretty good report considering sort of the challenges we had at trying to get everybody on the same page and uh, getting together such a lengthy report in such a short amount of time. But, um, you know, some of the things that I had contributed in the wiki wisdom were some um, of some tools that I do feel are very useful. Um, I really like some of the media bias tools that are on there, like All Sides and Ground News, which um, All Sides will take a topic in the news and um, give the uh, article from like a left, right, and center news source, sort of side by side. Um, ground news will show how different topics, the percentage that are covered in the right media versus the left media versus center media. So I think that's really uh, an interesting way to sort of approach information literacy. Um, we have NewsGuard, which we've discussed before. Not Some of our new commissioners were not on the commission then, but we have NewsGuard on several of the public computers and the staff computers. And what that does is it gives a little um, uh, sort of badge by websites that they've rated according to different criteria and kind of gives you the score, whether it's got a green score or a red score, or it'll show what just hasn't been rated. So it's just another tool to kind of help you evaluate sources and help the staff evaluate sources. Um, there's some other interesting organizations on there like Heterodox Academy, which um, has resources about um, communicating, sort of communicating across the aisle or communicating with people who have different perspectives than you. So I, I think they're at the, RAND, um, the RAND organization site on there has a really long list of tools, including things like how to recognize bots or um, how to recognize what ads are targeting you, stuff like that. So it's a very rich document. It's a, it's a very large topic. Um, 
I think it's, you know, a complicated topic because I think that, you know, uh, traditional media has been sort of so negatively impacted by the internet that at least for me, I, I kind of no longer feel like I have like one source that I go to for my news. You know, I kind of feel like I have to, you know, look to a lot of different sources and try to piece together stories, you know, that it's really challenging these days, you know. So I think, you know, one of the things that librarians can do is, you know, teach people information literacy and hand them these tools. And I really think you really need to use more than one. You know, the fact checking sites are one tool, media bias sites, um, but it's, it's a lot of work to get your news these days, you know, unfortunately. So anyway, I just included the document. We have taken um, several of the tools and created a resource list that we have on our website now and we have on the team page of our website. Um, there is some opportunity for programming here and when we get back to programming, you know, possibility uh, possibilities with some of these organizations. So, so it seemed like a good starting point, the, the, the document. Questions or comments on disinformation? I, I read through the document, clicked through the links, watched a video, and went down the rabbit hole of this thing. I mean, it it uh, it, it feels like there's a tribal aspect to this, right? You're you're in a tribe, either virtual or physical, that you all kind of agree to agree to one thing, and. And it's just like, it doesn't matter what the facts are because your tribe believes this thing. And um, I, I don't know how the library fixes that. It's, uh, you know, it's very human to <laughs> to go into tribes and say, this is, this is our version of the truth. Commissioner Hall? Uh, I just, I also got a chance to kind of look through the whole document and look at through some of the videos and resources and everything. And I, I was just really impressed. Um, I know it sounds like it was a big effort to put it all together with so many different people from so many places, but uh, these are skills. I think, I think most people know that I am a college professor. So these are skills that I'm trying, I think at the college level to help people to learn. And so seeing it coming from, the library system and hopefully teaching these skills to kids that are even younger is really important. So I think it was really well done. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that was brought up is that a lot of schools don't have librarians anymore. So that is, um, you know, one of the things that sort of handicaps uh, the teaching of of these skills. But, um, you know, there are some organizations also listed like Braver Angels and some of these organizations that try to bring people together for dial to dialogue with each other too, which I think is an interesting concept. Um, but yeah, I, it's interesting. I used to have certain websites that I would get all my news from. And now I, I subscribe to like six different people on Substack. <laughs> I check like 10 different people on Twitter. I mean, you know, just the amount of effort I go to, to kind of try to piece together the news these days is. is well, kind of don't, don't you think another aspect of it is the truth is really complicated and we don't have the time to actually understand the nuance. And so we round up or round down and you know, those could be two different answers. I mean, it's like the world is really complicated. Um, well, I think social, you know, social media definitely, you know, added another layer of complication. And, you know, there, there are many things that are good about social media that more people have a voice and more people can weigh in. But um, it also uh, creates a lot of complications, you know, at the same time. Any questions or comments on disinformation? All right, I guess the next item on the agenda is J3, discussion of the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget process. So um, 
the budget hearings are underway in council. They'll continue tomorrow night. And then the budget is supposed to be voted on, I think it was June 15th. Uh, however, they have not, they've had a lot of other items on the council agenda that have taken up, like on this first hearing that they had last week, have taken up most of the meeting. So it's possible that they may have to add another council meeting at the end of the month to have more time to discuss the budget. I guess we'll see. Um, but it, right now it is slated to be dis, uh, voted on on June 15th. Um, so there has not been, there's been kind of minimal discussion. <clears throat> we haven't had any, uh, budget response reports directed at the library. Um, the decision packet, a decision package was put forth to, uh, for the $50,000 for the collection money, uh, for the library. Um, it's looking like there is a possibility we'll be able to fill our vacant positions this year. Oh, wow. Um, so that's good news if, if uh, that ends up happening. Um, so I don't have a whole lot to report. Um, I will say that, um, you know, the state, um, there may be uh, money flowing to public libraries from the state through the state library this year. They, they have actually, they are proposing a lot of money for libraries and some of that could be to address infrastructure. So we were asked to submit, you know, some of our facility needs, which um, especially at the main library, there are some um, facelift items such as the kind of uh, wallpaper that needs to be replaced. We've got a divider in our main meeting room that doesn't work. And if we could get that repaired, you could actually split, split the meeting room in two. I mean, we do have some needs for that here. And then also, um, you know, they've asked about things like, you know, a lot of libraries are going fine free. So they've looked at the possibility of uh, forgiving people's fat past library fines. And uh, so there could be various uh, areas of funding that we, that we may receive through the state, which is also good news too. Questions or comments on the 2021-2022 budget? All right, moving on, uh, J4 director's report. Okay, so just a couple things I wanted to point out from the report. Um, on April 5th, we had a take and make um, Save the Monarch uh, milkweed seed packets that we uh, passed out, but that's kind of in connection with, we actually have a Monarch butterfly garden at the uh, main library now on the side of the building. Uh, staff has been really, uh, some of our staff is really <laughs> obsessed with the garden and <laughs> what's going on there because it's kind of taken off like gangbusters recently and in fact the milkwood is all munched up at the moment so um the person the volunteer from the community who's been sort of overseeing the garden has actually had to take some of the caterpillars back to his house because we're running out of milkweed but um we're we're we we're hoping to get it classified as like an official um monarch uh garden and you know, I think there'll be some opportunities for some programming with that in the future. Um, a question about that. Yes. Um, would that be something where there might be an opportunity to do like a live webcam or some sort of updates to the, you know, to send them to the Facebook page just to watch the progression? So I know my family is really into watching like when an eagle is born in this particular nest in Northern California, the community might be very interested to see that, you know, how are they doing today type thing. Well, it's interesting because I have twice posted photos and they, those posts always did really well. So I'll try to get some more out there. I know I had uh, one of my staff members was taking photos on her iPhone of the butterfly coming out of the, I can't remember what it's called, the casing. Cocoon or casing. So I'll, I'll try to get some more of those because people, like I said, the staff has gotten really into it. Um, so I'll, I'll try to get some more of those posted. Um, another thing, uh, on April 7th, uh, Commissioner Beauchamp, you might be interested in this, uh, 
Donia Sickler and I participated in a Zoom webinar on libraries and community engagement, a listening session in which libraries were sharing some of the programs they'd done, like Harwood or other types of programs like that. Um, so we are planning to do a, a Harwood Institute program with the teens once we can get them back in. Oh, yeah. And as part of our budget goals for the year, I do have to do two adult sessions, but I think it would they'd be better in person. So hopefully between now and uh, July 2022, we could get something in person uh, once we start doing programs in person and look at the working adults again. Yeah. Um, on April 8th, the Friends of the Library held a bag of book sale. They've started doing that every Tuesday from 10 to noon. They go into the Friends bookstore and put the um, shield in front of the door and they just sell a bag of books in different genres for $10 a bag. Um, as we look to bringing back in-person programming and stuff, we'll have to see how they feel about reopening the store or it's a very small confined space. So we may wanna look at like outdoor book sales for instance, but the, the bag of book sales is doing pretty well. You know, they usually make between $100, $200 um, every week, which isn't bad because usually when the book store is open, I think they pull in about a thousand a month. So that's not too far off, but um, we'll have to see or maybe expanding that to more days as well. But so far, it's been pretty successful. Uh, uh, Commissioner Koopman. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. For the bag of books, I saw that we talked about it in the minutes um, and I wasn't here, so I do apologize. Um, are the bag of books like, um, are they separated by like genre? Are they separated by age group? Um, how are they? They're, they're first separated by age group. So teen, adult and uh, kids, picture books. And I think maybe further divided by age of kid and children and then the adults are separated also by mystery history biography i think science fiction and then just regular fiction we did actually on the first day we had a patron buy a bunch of bags of children's books to send to the border which i actually we, they were very happy to you know be able to provide that so and i maybe you said this how many how many books are in a bag is it 10? 10. Okay, thank you. And then also on, and I'll let uh, Donia Sickler maybe talk a little bit more about this since she's here, but she watched an Info People webinar on music for autism concerts at your library, and she's sort of excited to introduce that as a program here. So I'll let her talk about that. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you know, but I, I used to be a paraeducator with special needs. So I'm. this is very near and dear to my heart. When I first started, I actually had a inclusive story time we were doing because we had the extra staff. I could do that. But um, this is a, a, a opportunity for us to draw in our special needs population. And normally these are done only on the East Coast, in New York area. But they, with COVID, they started doing virtual uh, music for autistic people. And the reason they need to have a, a special little group for them is because, you know, they, they have their outbursts, they get excited, they may stem and jump around or shake their hands or something. And sometimes people get distracted by that and sometimes scared of that. So it's really a, a really cool program. I wish we could do something like that here. Maybe we could get the uh, New, York, New York City Opera to do something with our LA City Opera <laughs> and come to the library. I would just, that would be my dream. But we, I'm looking into, I'm contacting the person. From what I understand from the program, we just have to put up a, like an advertisement. They do want people to RSVP. So I'm working that out, trying to see what we can do for our special needs community, because we do have a great need for that in our area. And that would be something that no other library in the seven systems that are around here is doing. 
Does anybody have any questions? All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, and then I just wanted to mention as far as the statistics that we did have our, and again, because probably because we're open for browsing, but our May circulation is the highest circulation month for this past fiscal year. May is not on our, on the chart that you received, but our total circulation for May was 23,826. So we are going oh. up, you know, we are getting busier. Any questions or comments on the director's report? Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, Mem uh, K, member items and referrals to staff. Uh, Commissioner Koopman, I think you wanted to make a motion. Um, I'd love to, yes. Um, my motion would be to ask um, the staff to speak with Ventura Library and just come back to us about what, how successful or what they, why they continued or why they are still doing the after hours patron visits. I don't, is that what you would call it? After hours patron visits? I mean, uh, um, I would say the open plus program and open I plus program. thank you to know like what their measures of success are with it. Yes. And maybe commissioner Koopman, would you be open to amending your motion to include Torrance that's doing the, the oh, trial? Yes. Well, I think, um, Torrance, I can just find out the the date that they're planning to open, and then um, it may take them a little bit longer to have any data to give us, though. Okay, so maybe don't amend it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. <laughs> so there's a motion. There's a motion on the table to uh, uh, refer to staff to uh, research Open Plus with Ventura Libraries. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Hannon. Um, any discussion on the motion on the floor? If you approve the motion, please say aye. Commissioner Koopman? Aye. Commissioner Fisi? Aye. Thank you, Commissioner Hannon? Aye. Commissioner Walls? Aye. Commissioner Hall? Aye. Commissioner Worsing? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes and we'll make that referral to staff. Any other member items or referrals to staff? Commissioner Koopman? Um, I'm just curious as to where we are with the idea of transitioning, the possibility of transitioning over to the county library system or privatization. Um, I do realize I missed the last meeting, so but it wasn't really mentioned in that in the minutes. And I know you briefly just mentioned it today, but you didn't really expand upon it. Um, is there so any- Director Anderson told us it was part of the strategic planning and uh, the strategic planning has been delayed. So the, 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 the discussion on that topic has been delayed. Now, Director Anderson, do you want to elaborate on that? Well, my guess, yes. So nothing has, nothing has happened since I first brought that item to the commission. However, I'm just going to guess that by the next meeting, which will be August 2nd, that strategic planning will happen between now and August 2nd. And I will also let you all know, you know, what date that is once it gets scheduled. And then, um, Ideally, I'd be bringing that back anyway, because, you know, we would have had a meeting and I would bring that information back. Okay. So we're not anywhere right now, which is okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Koopman. Any other items or referrals to staff? Okay. Um, I get a motion and a second to adjourn. And it would be adjourning to August 2nd. Uh, adjourning to August 2nd, yeah. I, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Commissioner Koopman. Is there a second? I'll second. I'm sorry, who was that? Candace. Hey, thank you, Commissioner Nafisi. Uh, we'll just do quick roll call. If you uh, agree to adjourn, Commissioner Koopman, say aye. Aye. Commissioner Nafisi. 
Aye. Sorry that. No that. worries. Commissioner Hannon. Aye. Commissioner Walls. Aye. Commissioner Hall. Aye. And Commissioner Worsey. Aye. Thank you. Um, we're adjourned. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of months. Maybe this will be a big meeting, huh? <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Thank Susan. you. Susan? Yes. Can I just ask you one quick question after? Just really, it's not. Okay. It's not. Okay.